Have you ever been certain your telephone would ring in the next 10 seconds? Or have you ever walked down a strange street and had the feeling that you knew what lay beyond the unturned corner? Yes? Then you've had a brief encounter with the world of the unknown. You are ready for the actual human experience that follows. This is not merely a story of arson. They will put this fire out in time. No one will be hurt. But she who started the fire, what about her? You saw her face. She is not merely an arsonist. Look at her again. Eleven o'clock, exactly the same time as before, but many miles away. Bill, I'm gonna be perfectly frank with you. I don't know what causes these fevers. They seem to be malaria, the way they come and go, but they're not quite like it. She'll be fine in the morning. That's the way it's been. In the morning. She's already past the crisis. When did the fever come on? Around 10. Inside of 15 minutes, it shot up to 103. It's the fourth time this year. I just don't know. Oh, dear. Another fire. At Lieberg this time. Fortunately, all the kids got out. The building was pretty well destroyed, though. Why, that's the fourth one this year, and they all seem to happen in the same sort of place. The last one was at a girls' school, you remember? I'd be willing to bet the same firebugs are responsible for all of them. Well, now, how could that be? The girls' school, well, it was just on the border of Canada, and Lieberg is, well, it's only two hours from New York City. Walk down the middle, Yeah, hide it someplace. It always upsets her to read about these fires. Good morning, Father. Good morning, darling. Good morning. You know, I don't know why it took me so long to get dressed. Well, such long faces for such a lovely morning. Well, you you look so well. I I declare I don't see how you can. Now, now, Mrs. Hari, I do not want to hear another word about last night. Bill. Esther. Look, I... What's the matter? Well, you were awfully sick last night and... Please. Please don't let's talk about it today. Please. All right. I love you. paper it didn't come this morning 
It always comes. What's the matter? What happened? Was there a fire last night? Now, don't upset yourself, please. What did you do with it if you burned it? No, all right. Don't you tell him I told you. And please don't let it bother you. It's no concern of yours. Hello, Chief Wilson. It's, uh, it's very good of you to be so prompt. Well, you said you had to see me. Yes. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Everybody's out, so we won't be disturbed. Won't you sit down? Thank you very much. What was it you wanted to tell me, Mrs. Quentin? It's about those fires. I should have come to you some time ago, but I just couldn't bring myself to. But now, I'm afraid the children might be burned to death. Oh, you mean those orphanage fires? Yes, they, they are terrible, but thank God they're nowhere around here. But they will be, because she will be here. Who? My sister, Emily. Oh, Mrs. Quinton. I know that she is the one that's responsible for setting all of those fires. How do you know that? I know... because I... I can feel her mind working. What do you mean, you can feel her mind? I always knew what she was thinking. You see? We're identical twins. I haven't seen her since we were ten. But I know what she's thinking. Uh, I see. Uh, well, what about your sister? Does she know what you're thinking? No. No. And she never knew that I could read her mind. She had such terrible, horrible thoughts. Mrs. Quinton, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Everybody thought that she was kind and, and good and wonderful. That's what she wanted them to think. But I knew what she really was. And when those hideous fires started to break out, I kept hoping that somebody would catch her and, and, and put her away. Mrs. Quinton, have you talked this over with your husband? No. No, you see, my husband doesn't know I have a twin sister. Why not? Well, when I was 17, I left my hometown and I came to New York. That's where I met my husband. And, well, it didn't seem to be any reason for me to tell him about the past. But now, I'm afraid. Well, sorry, right, I'll, I'll take care of it once and just don't you worry about a thing, Mrs. Quentin. Uh, do you, do you have to involve my husband? I mean, you know, I, you can imagine how ashamed I am if there were any scandal in oh, his family. No, 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 I'll, I'll keep it very quiet. Just don't you worry, Mrs. Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Esther. Esther, please. I, I, I knew he'd go straight to you. I should have known he'd do it. But I, I can't help it if he doesn't believe me. Bill, Bill, you've got to do something. You've got to do something to stop her. You must, before it's too late, you must do something. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I should have told you a long time ago. I know it. I am sorry. But, Esther, we don't... We don't even know where you're... Where Emily is. But she was in Lieberg last night. That's where the fire was, wasn't it? Mrs. Quentin, please, listen for a moment. 
If it's true that you know what your sister is thinking. If it is true. I swear to you that it is true. And working on the theory that you have a sister named Emily. You don't, you don't believe that? Well, it's, it's hard to believe. You've never mentioned her before. Would you, would you believe me if Emily called me on the phone tonight? I can will her to call me. What? I can will her to call me. I can. If you can do that, then will her to stop setting fires. Oh, but I can't do that, Dr. Parks. Don't you think I have tried? Don't you think I've really tried? Bill. Bill, you don't believe a word I've said, do you? Well, I... darling, first you say that you can will her to do one thing, and then you say that you can't will her to do something else? But don't you see? I can't, I can't change what she really is. Emily is evil, Bill. She is evil. Oh, you think, you think that I'm all imagining this, don't you? No, don't you think that? No, no, you, you're worn out from the fevers. Sometimes people get strange fancies when they're ill, isn't I it? I am right? not insane, Bill. Don't you understand? I'm not insane. Oh, no, I am not ill and not I'm not saying insane. Not saying that, We're not saying it. Emily will call here at 10 o'clock tonight. And when she does, I want you to answer the phone, Bill. And I want you to be here, Dr. Parks and Chief Wilson. And then perhaps you'll believe me. I, I hope it won't be too late. Well, if it's all right, I'll be going along then. Oh, certainly, Chief. Again, my apologies for wasting your time this way. Hello. Hello. Gate. Gate. What? Gainstown, New York, calling. What? Yes, this is the Quentin residence. Hello. Hello. This is William Quentin. Esther's upstairs. Uh, who's calling, please? Emily Harkness. Can you wait a second, please? I I'll get Esther. Hello? Central. Central, we were cut off. Oh, thank you. She hung up. What did Emily say? She said, this is Emily Harkness. Is, is Esther there? When I asked her to wait, she... She laughed in a strange way and... and hung up. Bill! 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 Stop. Bill! Stop her! Stop her! She started... But she started another fire Esther, again. Esther, darling, we just spoke to her on no, the phone. No, it's... It's a convent school this time. It's in the back. It's spreading all through the building. We, we just stop. stop her. Listen to me. We just stop. Leave her again, Bill. Take her upstairs. Vernon, stop her. Vernon, stop. Stop her. Stop. Hello, Central. Chief Wilson. I can make a long-distance call. Gainstown, New York. The police station, please hurry. Hello? Hello? This is 
Chief Wilson, calling from Cedar Falls. Do you have a convent or parochial school in Gainstown? St. Anne's? Thank you for your information. I'll explain later. Hello, Central. Please connect me with St. Anne's School, Gainstown, New York. Hello, St. Anne's School? Yes. This is Sister Agatha speaking. Cedar Falls? Police Chief? No, no, I wasn't asleep. What can I do for you, sir? Have you had a fire there this evening? A fire? Certainly not. Wait just a minute. I can't talk now. What happened? There is a fire. I... I, I, I heard people yelling. I heard the bells. I'm going to get action on this right now. There's no sense bothering with Gainstown. She moves too fast for that. She must live somewhere. Your wife said she hadn't heard or seen her for some time, but other people have. Where did Mrs. Quentin used to live? Waterville. She was raised in the orphanage there. I'm off there right now. Bill, please tell me the truth. Did anything happen last night that was bad? I mean, I'm not talking about the phone call from Emily. Everything's all right. Try to eat something, dear. I'll try. Mr. Quentin, Chief Wilson. Oh, yes. Esther. What happened? Tell yes. me. Did you find her? Did you? Did you find her? Oh, darling, this is a business matter. Let me know. Mrs. Quentin should hear this, too. I just got back from Waterville. I had a long talk with the superintendent of the orphanage there. Go on. Mrs. Quentin did have a twin sister, Emily, all right. They shared a room together when they were kids. When they were ten years old, there was a fire in that room. Emily died in that fire. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't, I tell you, she didn't. She didn't die, she didn't, I tell you that she didn't, no, she didn't, she didn't, no, no. Bill, Bill, listen, now, you, you talked with Emily on the phone, and, and Dr. Parks, you, you heard him, and, and so did Chief Wilson, now, you, you can't deny that, either of you, can, can you? You can't! You just can't deny that you are them! And, and wouldn't I have known if my very own sister were burned to death in a fire? Esther, darling, for heaven's sake. I... I remember that fire. The curtains. The curtains, they were... They were ablaze. And they... They caught fire to a dress. And she was burned, but she didn't die. I tell you that she didn't die. Mrs. I tell you, you she didn't die. Oh, uh, uh, oh, she's she's getting strong. She's getting stronger. Please, you've got to stop her. Stop her, please, Bill. And will I to come here, Bill? Oh, Bill, do you believe me? Yes, darling. Yes. You do. You believe. Will her to come here. Yes. Yes. Bill, what are you doing? You're losing your mind? She did call, Doctor. Somebody called. Somebody called at 10 o'clock, just as Esther said. And that somebody said she was Emily Harkness. Will her to come here? Emily. 
take the train tonight. Emily, the train. Uh, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. How's Mrs. Quinn? She'll be all right. Once we find Emily and put her away. I told you that I don't Emily... care what you told me. Emily Harkness did call here last night, and there was a fire in Gainstown. The superintendent in Waterville must have made a mistake in the records. It wasn't a matter of just checking the records. The man was there at the time. He remembers the girls well. He remembers what happened. So does my wife. She said that her sister did not die in the fire, and I believe her. I didn't just check with the superintendent. I checked with three other people who were there at the time. They said that Emily was a sweet, lovable girl. And that her sister, your wife, was insanely jealous of her. They didn't say that Mrs. Quentin started the fire. It may have been an accident. May have been an accident? What are you trying to say? All I'm trying to say is after it happened, Esther went into a high fever. She was out of her head for quite some time. After she got over it, she never mentioned her sister again. The folks at the orphanage thought it was better that way. I prefer to believe what I heard last night with my own ears. Good night, Chief. I wish we hadn't left Esther alone. She's not alone. Mrs. Harney's with her. phenomenon of bilocation, the power which enables a person to be in two places at once, has been reported many times. In a sense, the one entity becomes two. The second is sometimes called the etheric double. In this instance, Esther Quentin may have been subconsciously aware of the truth, that the evil Emily was actually her other self and so deliberately consigned both entities to the flames. <laughs> 